folks that was the very first cast of the day I'm on some backwater here off the Mississippi River and this bridge kind of makes some eddy water and the white bass and the hybrids just get stacked up in here we're gonna see how many we can get the first cast usually tells you what you need to know if there's enough in here to start catching them and there clearly is they're usually on the downstream side but I was gonna catch any up here that I could before I moved down there but I'm not gonna keep many fish today but I am gonna keep a few This is a little treacherous. If you slip and slide that in there, you're kind of screwed. But I will show you that you don't actually have to cast here. You can just drop your bait in the water and let the current do its job. Look, see right there first, as soon as it hit the water. There's a lot of gar in here too though. There he is. Got him that fast. Look. I'm only going to keep these really big ones. I need some really big fillets. And these are really big white bass. You just got to watch it with these trebles. These white bass are fat and really strong. I watch how I handle them too, because that's really sharp. Again, you don't even have to cast. You just let the current do its thing. You'll see. The white bass just run this edge. You should be able to get them right there. Yep. The more eddy water, the better. Right there. There it was. Oh! Missed two, caught two. There he is. Woo. And that current, they really do some pulling. So I've got 15 pound fluoro on this pole. And these white bass will hit just about anything you put in the water that looks like a shad. These rattle traps just work good because they got the treble hooks. But I mean, that's a big white bass. I mean, that's a big dude. I'm hoping to get a couple of big hybrids. And they're in here. Hybrids are in here, and white bass are in here, striped bass are in here. Technically, there's largemouth too, but not quite as many. Usually, if there are largemouth, they're right here in the corner or up there. They're usually not right in the swiftest water, but the stripers and the hybrids usually hang out here in the tailwater, right back here. Let's see if we can't get our hands on one. There he was immediately oh he came off catch and release run my bait right there
There he was. Got him. <laughs> I'm not going to keep this guy. Oops. Sorry, bud. Hmm. We're not in here in really big numbers. At least not yet. Might be a later morning thing. There he is. That's a good size one. In this current, they are just insane. I mean, he's right there, but look how he's pulling my pole over. He's just stuck in that little trench. That's a big one. We'll keep him. He doesn't get off. We got four big ones. That's eight fillets. I don't need many more than that. Maybe a few more. And then we'll just... I'd like to get a real big striper and a real big hybrid for some really big fillets. Now you can use this current so fast, you can use a build bait, but you don't really throw it and reel it in, throw it and reel it in, because the current's so strong, it just sucks it straight down, you'll get hung. All these ripples are made from trees and rocks that are in the water, and you'll just hang them with a build bait. That's the reason why I'm throwing this lipless. And I'm running it right beside those rocks. You can see the rocks making the waves right there. I'm running it right beside them. Those white bass and hybrids and stripes Oops, and the guards even will run right beside those and ambush the the fry and the shad and the stuff that's coming out of them. Oh, there he was. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> that was nuts. He came up and smacked it off the top. We won't keep this guy if he'll slow down long enough for me to get him off. Come on, buddy. I can't put my hand in the mouth with all them hooks. Hmm. <laughs> This whole thing's got white bass in it. I think the ones that are feeding are right here on the edge. And so it's easier just to fish like this, like that, see? <laughs> he didn't, didn't hold it real good. There he is, see that? That's a big one. Keep him. See, I mean, that's a two and a half hand lengths long. 
I've caught them in here a lot bigger, but as far as white bass go, that's pretty nice. see that's that's five I don't know how many I want to keep I just I want to put some back in the freezer have a fish fry or something later I mean you can literally sit here all day and catch these guys let's see I'm just gonna sit here let out about four feet of line Drop my bait in. Let it kind of sit there in the water. And the white bass will come and go. There it is. See that? That's all I did. Was just leave it in the water. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Kind of messing the camera up there. I should probably wear these guys out a little more. And I won't have to fight them so much. I don't want to zap their energy when I put them back. They're still good to go. I'm about to have to go get some more buck spray in a minute. All right, so same length of line. I'm just going to drop it right back down in there. Run it right here along the side of the bank. Nothing. Do it again. I've actually caught them as close as way up here. I think if they were right here, I'd see them though, but you never know. Like right on the bank. Oh well, let's see if we can catch one all the way over there. I think they're quite far enough. There you go. Wee, wee. Now that's a scout pulling fish. I don't know what I got, but I got a big one that time. I don't know if it's just a big white bass or I got a hybrid now. Definitely gonna get the net though. No, it just looks like a big white. No, it's a hybrid. That's what I was wanting to get. A hybrid or a stripe, one or two. Let me get him off this slope. This is what I've been trying to get. Just because I wanted some bigger fillets. Oops. How about we just not get our hands in there? Pretty fish. We can't pull a large mouth or something out of here. There he is. What have I got? <laughs> Little bitty white bass. Come here, bud. Let's not get a hook in the finger. Go right on the outside of those rocks. There was something. 
Oh man, there he was. Whatever it is. It's a good one. Oh, that's a big white bass. Yeah, he choked it too. That is a big white bass. Look at that dude. I mean, he choked it. Look at that. I don't know how to do this here. He's got it so locked in. Calm down, dude. I really don't want a hook in my hand. There we go. We got him all. It's a pretty white bass. Let's let him go. Sure. All right. I want to throw them over there, but I know all I'm going to get is a gar. Because there's a bunch of them rolling in there. Come back down to this water. That was a good sized fish up here in this calmer water. That looked like a big gar. There he is. Good fish. He's got the current working for him. Big white bass. Look like I got him completely on the outside. Hmm. Let's not do that. I'm not I don't want to beat you up. These fish are just super strong in the swift water. <laughs> so fast. I got one as soon as it hit the water over there. He doesn't feel that big yet. Unless he's just coming right at me. <laughs> he's not that big. This is a, a more standard size white bass. Don't hook me, dude. The small ones are easier to handle without getting hooked. The big ones will hook them immediately. There he is. He's got some pool. <laughs> I 
Oop. Left my pliers down here. Oh, got your foul hook, sorry buddy. You got a big sore on the side of you. You don't even know you're loose, do you? <laughs> Alright guys, let me show you what I've been doing. I'm on some backwater right off the Mississippi River. You can kind of see Mississippi River right there. I'm going in behind some of these islands. If you have any big islands near you on the Mississippi River, most of the big islands have a bridge across it because a lot of them are hunting clubs and they build these bridges. And if you can get to one of those bridges, it creates a lot of eddy water and those white bass really like to ambush their prey there. And so what I was fishing with today is a three quarter ounce rattle trap, just chrome blue. It really doesn't matter. Um, chrome blue, chrome black, whatever. I'm using a three quarter ounce because it was weighted properly uh, to fight the current. The half ounce wasn't quite big enough. And if you throw a build bait, it tends to dive a little deep and you get hung up in the rocks. Um, but I'm throwing 15 pound line um, you don't have to throw a line that big, but if you catch one of the big hybrids or big stripes, you really want some heavy duty line. Um, and it helps when you get hung, you get hung in the rocks, you, you, you get uh, little nicks in your line from hanging the rocks. So it helps to have that bigger line. Um, but uh, I basically just have a blues speed spool combo, little Bass Pro special um, with some 15 pound P-line uh, tactical, which is by far in my opinion the best uh, fluorocarbon line to, to, to run uh, you know you can see this bait is really beat up um, it was practically brand new when I started this morning the chrome's kind of busted all off there's teeth marks in it there's places where it hit the, the rocks I've ripped two of the hooks off of the trebles that's just from yanking on it with the pliers white bass uh, for those of you that don't fish for them those all the striped fish are really a dangerous fish to handle just because they've got sharp gill plates and then they thrash and if you've got all those treble hooks in there and they thrash I've, I've had a couple of friends that's been hooked pretty good trying to handle them without pliers you really just got to be careful um, so bring you a pair of pliers grab you some rattle traps I mean you can buy you can bring uh, swim baits and stuff like that and they'll bite that too but um, the rattle trap gives plenty of flash plenty of sound I got plenty of hooks to grab them so you don't lose as many fish um, I probably caught about 30 or so maybe a few more I think I kept seven or so just to get me some some nice big fillets um, but it's a nice morning they usually don't start running until the weather gets hot and it's uh, late May right now and uh, it's supposed to be like 90 degrees today so it's plenty hot the water's warming up the bugs are bad, gnats are bad, mosquitoes are bad. Bring you some bug spray if you come out trying this. Somebody had already been to the spot that I went to. They probably were there yesterday. There were scales all over the bank, a couple of blood spots, beer cans, water bottles. I mean, they left kind of a mess, which is kind of messed up that people do that. But um, anyways, I still caught plenty of fish. The river's fixing to come up about another foot, and then it's going to come back down. So I may come back out here when it comes back down a little bit. When it gets too high, you really can't catch them. It's hard to, to fight the current and, and, and get to where the fish like to stay. And they like to stay, the white bass and striped fish in general like to ambush in the river. They like to ambush in eddy water. So if you can find a dike with a break in it or fish the tip of the dike where the eddy water is, those are good places. Um, they will school up in the, in the middle areas, like right here in between these islands. They'll school up here chasing uh, balls of bait um, shad and uh, fry whatever and you can catch them out here it's, it's harder to locate them like that just because there's so much water so if you just pinpoint a few uh, eddies then you can usually find them even if you find like a ditch that's running into it creating that little bit of turbulence I've, I've pulled in there and caught six or seven nice white bass out of there before so you just kind of got to get out and explore but anyways I'm going to leave it to you. I'm going to get out of here, go fillet these fish, get them in the freezer, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Later.